Hello, this is Albert van Dijk, and uh, in this video, I'm going to introduce the third lab uh, in the remote sensing uh, uh, part of this course, uh, and that is about analyzing LiDAR point cloud data and also analyzing uh, LiDAR full waveform data. Uh, and th that's really a very different thing from uh, using um, uh, gridded data because, uh, what, as you'll find, LiDAR data have a, a particular uh, origin. Uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, location to them. They're essentially point data. So the way we have to process them is quite different from processing nicely regular gridded data. Uh, so we're going to look at full waveform LiDAR data, how we get a point light out of that, and then we're going to look at uh, uh, some processes uh, in MATLAB to interpolate those data into grids, because ultimately grids are much better and easier to show and to visualize. Uh, and we're going to import and evaluate the uh, results in uh, ArcGIS. Okay, so there's another video on LiDAR, so we're not going to go over that again. The only thing I'll remind you of is that um, we do start off with a full waveform where uh, we get the intensity of photons returned from the, uh, the vegetation and ultimately from the terrain uh, as a function of time uh, since the signal, the, the pulse was emitted from the, uh, from the airplane. And those are two important things to remember. First of all, that it's full waveform that you don't start off with points, those points are derived from the full waveform data. And the second point, that on the that essentially the, um, the, the, the vertical axis, I suppose, is uh, the time uh, from uh, uh, shortly after uh, the signal was emitted by the plane to uh, a longer time after it was emitted. And we convert that to the height above uh, um, the ground surface or height above some sort of uh, level using knowledge of the uh, altitude of the plane uh, and using the uh, fact that uh, uh, the speed of light uh, is a constant and therefore if we know how long it takes for a photon to travel to and back from an object then we can also work out how far that object was from the airplane. Those are important uh, concepts to remember doing this exercise. We're going to work with some data from ELVIS, that's a land vegetation ice sensor and that is uh, a, 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 a predecessor of the current system uh, used by NASA on the airplanes uh, and it's basically airborne LiDAR, full waveform LiDAR data that is publicly available. And that's why we're using it because you can find it via this website on the uh, NASA, on the, uh, NASA portal. Um, it's got a footprint of about 25 meters so when you look at these data imagine an area of about 25 meters diameter uh, returning the signal. So there's lots of different leaves and structures and whatnot in there. And the data we're going to look at is collected over Costa Rica over a rainforest, and here's a few pictures of that rainforest just to give you an idea of what's the you know what are you looking at. As you can see, it's a very dense rainforest with epiphytes and lianas and, and all sorts of interesting features. We're going to use MATLAB to visualize the waveform, and there's two examples here where you see the height as derived from the, uh, the the travel time of the of the uh, signal. Uh, and from uh, and in, and in the, there you can in this case you can clearly see a very steep intensity signal here. Uh, obviously, that must be the ground because there's no other peaks in this signal. Uh, in this case, you see uh, you see two peaks, and so you have to assume that the second one is probably the ground, and this is probably the canopy. Then, so we're going to look at a, a bunch of waveforms in this data set. We're going to create point clouds from the waveforms. Uh, where uh, each waveform will be shown as a, as a dot in the point cloud. So this is a map, if you like, uh, and this is a round area uh, for which we have uh, full waveform returns. And we can map, you know, the uh, the things like the ground uh, veget uh, and the vegetation uh, heights. Of course, one location can have multiple points. So going back to the full waveform, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find. Uh, the uh, the first return, so the top of the canopy, we're going to try and find maybe some intermediate points and, and look at the uh, the ground surface. This is what we're going to do with this data set. Uh, and again, here's an example where we see the ground and the, and the first return, more or less the top of the canopy there. All right, now some of the waveforms are going to be pretty complicated. You know, if you've got a lot of different layers within the 25 meter footprint, you might get something like this. This is also from the data set that we're using. And so then you have to decide how many points, how many peaks do I actually want to try and identify in there. All right, so uh, that's what you're going to do. You're going to visualize some waveforms, look at the point cloud, visualize some surfaces uh, from the extracted point cloud in ArcGIS. So then we're going to interpolate the point data 
uh, in, in, into a, a spatial map. Uh, and that's, uh, that's all going to be partly done in MATLAB and partly in ArcGIS. Then we're going to look at some LiDAR data, also airborne LiDAR data for the uh, Canberra region, uh, for Mulligan's Flat in particular. We're going to do some uh, similar things. At first, we're going to visualize the, dot, uh, the point cloud in uh, ArcGIS. We're going to calculate the tree heights in MATLAB, interpolate them into tree height maps, uh, and also interpolate the ground surface, and then evaluate, import, and evaluate that in ArcGIS. And here's so you know this is the sort of things that you should be uh, getting uh, should be seeing on your screen later on. Uh, and, um, I guess one thing to point out is that if you see uh, later on in MATLAB the uh, the three columns, uh, then you'll realize that this is easting, northing, uh, and height uh, above uh, sea level. And you can use that information uh, and interpolate it into maps like this. Interpolate the ground surface into a map, like, map like this. Uh, and then we're going to do the same or a similar thing, I should say, using handheld ground based uh, LiDAR laser scanning data. Again, we're going to visualize it, calculate tree height, interpolate it, uh, and evaluate ArcGIS. That will look something like this typically. Again, uh, same sort of uh, information there in the, in the, in the uh, tables. And, uh, we're going to see that the maps might look quite a bit different, and so that one of the questions is going to be you now if we compare the airborne and the ground based data, what, what do we see? What do we what can we infer from that? Uh, and uh, what might explain some of the difference that we find in mapping? And then finally, we're going to import uh, uh, when we have imported this, uh, this uh, uh, mapping into ArcGIS, we're going to export it. Uh, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, published maps, uh, and we're going to find out how to write a geotiff in MATLAB to make uh, the process of importing it in ArcMap easier. Okay, well that's the contents of this lab, and um, I think it's got a really, uh, you know, a real good fun uh, lab. It's not an easy one either, but uh, but um, you know by the end of this you'll have learned uh, a lot of uh, useful uh, things. I hope you will agree. Good luck. <laughs>